welcome to, <clears throat> wow, welcome to Beware of Spoilers, I am Adam, um, I think I'm gonna do two at once today, because I feel like putting everything into one, um, doing two separate episodes for these two movies feels kind of like a waste, only because they're both really good, and there's not too, too much to dissect about each, um, because I would say one of them is a near-perfect movie, um, and that's a rarity for me, because usually, usually I can find fault in just about anything, but I, I do think that uh, The Power of the Dog is a near-perfect movie, and the two movies we're going to talk about today are The Power of the Dog and um, the and Mixtape, both of which came out recently on the Netflixes, and we're going to talk about both of those, um, but first... A quick note, um, if you go on, um, Amazon, uh, on the Amazon or the Kindle store or anything like that, um, my book, Swan Song, is available for free, completely for free, no strings attached, you add it to your library, you get to keep it forever, completely for free, um, and that will be all this week, Monday to Friday, completely for free. It will be on there. Um, so that will be Monday, December 6th through uh, Friday, December 11th. Uh, completely, 100% for free um, as per the promotion that I set up. Um, so that will be available on there. Um, if you can go out and get the book and then give it a five-star rating, that would help a lot because proceeds from the book, um, all the books, um, will be, um, going to support the show, and then next week, Duet has the same deal, and then the week after, The Muses has the same deal, um, and, uh, and then after that, if you want to pick up Echo Alpha, um, that would be, uh, $2.99, only because it just came out, and I don't want to, uh, shit on the early adopters who pre-ordered Echo Alpha, um, so that won't be free until, you know, for a while, um, but if you want to get, um, Swan Song, which, lead, which is the first in the trilogy that leads into Echo Alpha, um, it is completely for free starting today, um, until Friday, so let's discuss, um, let's start with, uh, mixtape, um, because not that mixtape is the worst of the two, it's just mixtape is more mundane and is less likely to be on most people's radar. Um, because the power of the dog, Variety has it at the two seed for winning Best Picture. Jane, Ch uh, Jane Campion is very highly ranked to win Best Director. Benedict Cumberbatch is in talks for Best Leading Actor, and I think that one of the two leading. Uh, or supporting actors is also in contention, either Jesse Plemons or, um, Cody Smith, uh, Cody Smith McPhee, um, also, who was the other one, um, oh, Kristen Dunst, I think, was in contention, too, for Best Supporting Actress, but, um, yeah, so we'll do, um, we'll do Mixtape first, um, now, for me, Mixtape was kind of a, uh, um, a surprise, in terms of how good it was, because it wasn't exactly on my radar to begin with, um, because it, uh, it, it, I didn't even know it existed until I saw a notification about it, uh, not a notification, but, like, you know how they have the coming soon tab on the Netflix app, where you can scroll through and you can see all the movies that are going to be in, that are, like, impending, um, movies and TV shows, and it was there, and the description sounded cute, and I didn't really read too much further into it, it's like, it's about this girl who, um, both her parents are dead, and she finds a mixtape that her mother made before she died, and she wants to learn more about her mother, so she goes through and tries to recreate the mixtape, um, and it, it, it's pretty straightforward, and, um, it's, you know, it, it's kind of a, a coming-of-age story, it is about this, you know, like, preteen adolescent girl, I think she's 12, I don't think they ever say it, but in the description they say she's 12, um, and, uh, she, um, like the description said, she finds, she's, uh, she lives with her grandmother, who's played by Julie Bowen, which is one of those things that, 
at first I bumped into, but I think it's only because I watch reruns of Modern Family, and I associate her with early, Ju uh, like, Julie Bowen, where she was playing, you know, a mom, and then it's like, now she's a grandmother, but then when you get into what this show is about, like, this movie's about uh, a chain of unplanned teen pregnancies, um, where it's about, like, you know, her character, Gail, got pregnant when she was a teenager. Then, at 15, her, um, her daughter gets pregnant, too. And then, her daughter and her, I think they were married, as the daughter and the husband, the daughter and the boyfriend, well, the, the father of, of, uh, of Bev, the main character, die in a car accident, leaving Gail with this little girl, um, which is two. So then, that would put her, like, 45, maybe 50, the latest. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But it's one of those things that, like, there's a weird, like, disconnect where you're like, wait, hang on. That doesn't seem right. Um, but she does a really good job in the role. Um, I gotta say, I think she's definitely MVP for the movie. Um, and I think that, like, uh, the, the entire way that this movie kind of unfolds is it's, it's you know... If you've seen one coming-of-age story, you've seen kind of them all to the point where it's like, I'm looking at the time remaining, and I'm like, okay, so this is where she finds out bad news about her parents, and then this is where everything falls apart, and where she doesn't want to do the mixtape anymore, and it's that kind of thing where it's like, you know, it's formulaic, but there's a formula for a reason, and, and that's the thing, it's like, whenever I hear someone say, oh, it's too formulaic, or it's too, you know, it doesn't do anything new, it's like, the formula exists because the formula works. It's like, they don't mix up Coke and make new Coke and everyone love it. And, and you know, for every example of there being something cool and new that, um, something new that, um, that works as a, a play on something old, there are a million examples of where it didn't. And a million examples of, um, of things that should have just, that just stayed the same and we're just as good, and this is one of those things, where it's like, the soundtrack's great, it's got a lot of great music, which, for a movie called Mixtape, that's an important thing, that the music works, and it's, it, and the way the story unfolds, and it's about this girl coming into her own, and discovering her identity, and, and using this mixtape as a way to kind of discover who she is, and when we get to the end of the movie, and she talks about how, like, why does she want to do this, why, what was the point of all of this, and she says to, she says to, to Gail, like, I just wanted to know if my mother would have liked me, because she had to love me, but she didn't have to like me, and it's just this powerful moment, and it, 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 I think it's the strongest moment from her in the movie, but the best moment from Gail is hands down, it's a little earlier in the movie, where, um, Bev starts asking her a bunch of questions about her mom, um, like, oh, uh, what does she like to do, what about this, what about this, what does her voice sound like, and then you can see for a minute, like, Gail's kind of indulging the, qu the line of questioning and, like, letting it go, and then the realization hits her that she can't remember her daughter's voice, because she's been dead for ten years, and the realization that she doesn't remember what her daughter's voice sounded like is, is just heartbreaking, because the thing is, it's not said, I don't remember her voice, but she plays it out in her expression, like, where she, she thinks, and then she's like, oh my god, I don't remember, and it, it's just heartbreaking to watch, um, and then she's trying not to cry in front of the, in front of the little girl, and it's just, it's just heartbreaking, um, but yeah, um, it, it, it is a very, very good movie, and, uh, it's the kind of thing that a lot of people make gloss over, so I wanted to give it the opportunity to highlight it, um, but because it's definitely worth your time if you like coming-of-age stories or anything like that, um, like, it feels like a John Hughes movie, um, it, it, it is really good, um, so on to The Power of the Dog, um, which is a, uh, it, it premiered at Venice, and it took home the um, the best, their award for best direction, uh, and I completely understand why, um, Benedict Humberbatch is a fantastic actor, and he's been locked up in franchises for a while, 
But when he goes out of franchise and does other things, he's fantastic. Um, like, look, he played the Necromancer, he played Smaug, he played he plays Doctor Strange most recently, he played Sherlock Holmes. But when you watch him in this movie, um, he makes a case as to why he is one of the best active directors um, in Hollywood today. And that's no small feat. That is, you know, that's an accomplishment in and of itself. Like, he is fantastic in this movie. But he is not the person who stood out to me the most. The person who stood out to me the most is Jesse Plemons, who was having a fantastic two years, proving himself to be one of the most versatile actors I've seen in a long time. Um, Because we see him here. This isn't even the first time I've talked about him this year being in the new movie. Because he was here, he was in um, Jungle Cruise, where he's playing the scenery-chewing um, general for the German army during World War One, and he's just kind of just hamming it up and loving every minute of it. Uh, he played Todd in Breaking Bad and El Camino. Um, he played. He was in The Irishman. He's got this. You know, he he he's good. He's a very good actor, and I think that he's made this transition into into movies. And this is another person who's going to win an Oscar one day. Um, But he's fantastic. Um, And I think that he deserves a shout-out, too. Kristen Dunst does a great job, too, uh, playing the alcoholic uh, mother of uh, Peter. It's it's just all-around great performances. And in an ensemble cast like this, the fact that everyone puts on a great performance is just a, a, a nice little garnish on this movie. Because this movie would have worked if no one put on a good performance because the direction is so good. It's, it's just one of those little extra things. And it's one of those things where it's like, it's a treat to be able to watch someone at the height of their craft doing what they do at this level. Where it's like, you know, seeing anyone with a profound mastery at what they do, doing it at the level that they do in this movie is a beautiful thing. Um, and that goes for anything. It's like when you watch a, a sporting event when it's two fantastic teams against each other and both teams are doing very well. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of like that. Um, sorry, I'm still sick, so it's a little choppy. Um, I keep pausing the cough. Um, it's a little like that, where it's, it's these people who are at their, at the pinnacle of their field, doing what they do so well, and, and, and it's just, it's an achievement, um, I don't think that there is another movie. Like, hands down, this is probably going to end up being the best movie of the year. Um, where it, it's about... Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a slow-moving look at loss and, and and all of that kind of, you know... It's a depressing movie. It's a, it's, it's sullen and it's it's somber. And, and, it, and it's slow and deliberate in pace... And, and that's, you know, that's an important thing to do uh, in a movie like this, where it's, you know, it's, it's kind of slice of life to an extent. Um, and it's like one of the most, like, one of the, the best scenes in the movie um, comes toward the end when, uh, when he's delivering the lasso uh, to, to the kid and he's walking. Uh, slowly and pain because he is in he, he's dying he's sick and dying because he let this open wound get infected um, and he's walking um, in this suit because he doesn't want the kid to see him uh, doesn't want to see him sick and doesn't want him to have that memory um, and it's and then he, he dies right after that it's it's so good um and it's, it's, it's one of these wordless scenes, and it just delivers everything it needs to. Um, yeah, it's... Another thing I wanted to point out is um, how they use music in this movie, where early in the movie it's established that Kristen Dunst plays the piano, uh, but we see her mental decline throughout the movie as she struggles with alcoholism. Uh, another interesting thing they do in that regard is they show... Um, What's it called? They show uh, her, like, when she's on screen, they play piano music. 
and the worse she gets, the piano music loses its key. Like, it, 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 it starts getting played off key, and with errors, and with things like that, as she, she loses control, and as she, she falls, uh, deeper and deeper into this, this, this sickness, um, it, it's a, it's a really cool way to, to, to use music to convey that, uh, and they do that very well, too. Um, let's see what else to talk about. I think that's really it for this movie, because this movie is just so perfect, like, the cinematography is great, the, like, and, and, and it's like the production value is fantastic. It's, it's just a great movie all around. Um, it is definitely worth watching. Not only if you like westerns, but if you like, you know, if you like movies that kind of, it doesn't, I'm not going to say meander because meander sounds wrong. Uh, meander is more like what happened in House of Gucci. But like, it just kind of takes its time. It's slow and deliberate, and, and that works. Um, and, and yeah, we, I, I, I just don't have anything else to say. Um, so we'll wrap up there for today. Um, I may see Wolf still. I'm not 100%. Um, I am uh, still getting over this illness. And this week we do have um, uh, West Side Story and being the Ricardos um, coming out. Um, so we're looking forward to that. I still haven't seen King Richard either. Um, which not for any you know reason. It's just I haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, because I've been so busy. Uh, tonight I'm going to watch War, uh, War, which is, uh, a movie about, I think documentaries I think it's about, but that's going to be, uh, that's going to be cool. It's on Netflix. I got a notification that it's available now. I don't remember what it's about, but I put a notification for it to let me know when it was ready. Um, so I'll be watching that tonight. Um, also, Wheel of Time, have not forgotten about that, have been super busy. We'll get back to Wheel of Time, don't worry. Um, please stop emailing me and saying to get back on Wheel of Time. Uh, I am well aware of the fact that I am behind on Wheel of Time. Um, and then Hawkeye, episode four, and I feel like there was something else. Not that I can think off the top of my head, uh, but I'm also a little hazy right now. Um, so yeah, so we'll wrap up there for today. So until our next episode, have a great rest of your week.